Wood Orchard, Colton Burns Racing, number 307, Colton Burns. Tougher than Nigerian hair My criteria compared to your career just isn't fair I'm a venereal disease like a menstrual bleed Through the pencil and leak on the sheet of the tablet in my mind Cause I don't write, cause I ain't got time Cause my second minutes I was go to the almighty dollar Welcome guys to today's video um, As you just saw kind of prepping over the car Putting some mud slinger on it and getting it all ready for today's racing um, Head out here in about about eh, maybe an hour or so, and starting farther back than we normally would like, seventh place. So not terrible, not great, but we'll see how we can move forward or move backward. That's Alcox, and there is some damage to the left front of that car, so tough break for Luke Alcox. Yeah, they come over that little roller going down in that valley and just nowhere to go, just ran out of real estate. Wow, they are three wide entering the split lanes. Burns was caught in the middle. That's dicey down there. Two side by side is plenty in there. Yeah, Fitzgerald kind of got pissed off on exit there. There's our race leaders going by the bottom of our camera already. It's still Mottinger out front as they go up the Yokohama Tires flyaway. Sean Springstro, former light buggy champion, running in second in that 311 car. And you see Machinsky, Mottinger and Machinsky, they both come from Indiana. Those guys help each other out quite a bit throughout the season. In fact, Mottinger took last year off just so he could spot for Machinsky all year. He wanted to help out his friend and see what they could do together. Wow, just great guys, great teammates, and just anything they can do to help one another out. We talk about Montinger all the time. He, he's always not afraid just to put his right foot forward and be like, hey, I'll help you out with this. And kudos to him to be out front. Right. He's there's a not, great race car driver. There's not many people that we say this about, but Montinger is a, an excellent ambassador for off-road racing. Yeah, you couldn't have said it any better. Well, he's got company right now as they go through the split lanes. Springstro testing out that left-hand line. Springstro is showing some good speed here in the early going as well. Yeah, Sean's really doing a good job. Look at that roost coming off the back of Monitor's car. He's buttoned right up to the back door. We'll see if he can get a run going through Ziegler Cat turn. Look at that moisture shade all over the track right now. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky here in the early going. The water truck drivers put down a pretty heavy layer of water. We've seen a little bit of steam out of Monitor's car as well. Gonna find that but, dry line right out on the bottom. So we saw we saw a little bit of smoke out of Burns yesterday. Burns has a Dinsmore engine, so does Mottinger. So I think those motors just run a little bit hot. We know Dinsmore has built a great motors there. It's right on cue, Colt Burns puffing out some smoke as well. Yeah, you corrected me in round five because I got worried early, but that's what that motor does. So just sit back. It's gonna be one heck of a showdown. Look at these cars all neck and neck. Just a pack of wild dogs trying to hunt down Mottinger right now. He's holding on for dear life. You see Burns now trying the left-hand side. Yeah, Burns, he is definitely quick. Look at that, just going right in front of fourth, fifth, and sixth. Here comes Seatbelt now, getting into the mix. Mottinger has a lot of company. Top four just about nose to tail as they head for the Ziegler Catapult. Man, I have no idea how Mottinger is staying calm right now. I know by now his spotter has told him, hey, you got a bunch of company right behind you. I Look love Springstro. Springstro trying some different lines. Yeah, he is. He's trying everything. I love Mottinger's line through that finish line turn. 
He tried to dust out who's ever behind him. And look at this. We're side by side going off the drop off. Oh, we're not just side by side. We're going to go three wide. wide. Here comes Seatbelt now on the charge to the inside. Boy, they took a little breath, and Seafelt's like, hey, I'll take the lead. He does. Let's see if Mottinger can fight back. Burns now up in the mix as well. Burns and Mottinger are side by side. Springstro and Seafelt are, or Fitzgerald, excuse me, are side by side. Wow, look at Burns. He finds himself in second now. Going to try to hunt down our new race leader. Now here comes Fitz. Fitzgerald, Burns, and Seafelt, your top three. Seafelt running out front. Now he is out in the clean air. Mottinger got shuffled all the way back to the fifth spot. Burns still showing that smoke. Don't worry about it if you're sitting at home watching. He, he does that all season long. That car is definitely bad fast. Here comes Fitzgerald to the inside. And we've come to halfway. That race is flying by with all that, that air on the first half. Who's your pick, Shane? The second half. Well, you have uh, a multi-time champion and defending champion sitting there in third in Fitzgerald. Burns got the monkey off his back yesterday, picked up that big win. He's obviously wicked fast here at ERX. Seafelt, he's in the right spot right now, sitting first at halfway. He's the current points leader, too, so he's having a great season. He's the defending world champion of the class. How so do you who's pick? your pick? <laughs> The winner of this one's going to be the fans who get to watch how this plays out because it's going to be exciting all the way to the end. Here, there's Seafelt, a veteran in this class, not wasting any time. We'll see if Burns can stay on the back bumper. Seafelt, Fitzgerald, dozens and dozens, if not over 100 wins apiece. Colton Burns, one career win yesterday, and he is caught in the middle, but Burns went way wide through turn one. That's going to let Fitzgerald try to get a run. Yeah, you don't want to make a mistake in front of Fitzgerald. He'll set you up as he's just being patient now, going to that bottom side. Where are they going to go? Fitz staying to the outside as well. Boy, Fitz is definitely faster than Burns through that section. Yeah, they, they're really evenly matched. You said that Fitz is faster there, but I'm seeing Burns faster other places. Right, we saw right. yesterday, too. It seems like Burns is really willing to push hard into corners, and that car just sticks to the track. So. Some of these tighter sections, especially turn two, that's where Burns has the advantage. Yeah, you're right. We're seeing right there in that section, like you said, he's holding on to that spot. But Fitz, he's trying to pull everything out of his pocket to try to get around Burns. As they do that, though, that's when Seatbelt can kind of get away and get a little bit more of a gap on second and third. But Burns wants to prove me wrong. Yeah, Seafelt's loving this right now, but there you see Burns again closes the gap. Just so much more speed he's able to carry to the corner. And there's a mistake by Fitzgerald, so he is going to drop back a little bit. I don't know if Fitzgerald will lose a spot. No, Fitzgerald's still holding on to that third spot, but you see the interval now. Yeah, that Colton Burns just bonsaiing off that Fox Shots rhythm section. That mistake by Fitzgerald is going to let Burns focus forward, and that's it now. Seafelt still holding on to that lead. Oh, looking down at the bottom of our screen, somebody sheared off a left front. Hard to tell who that, that is. That's Jackson Keepers in the uh, 302. Yeah, first weekend out, bummer deal. Yeah, there you see the Argon lumber on the side. Drippy J says his uh, name plate underneath the window on the car. Not the way you want to get TV time in, in your uh, debut weekend, but. Here we are, and that's part of racing. Back up front, these guys still. And Fitzgerald closed that gap in a hurry, Brent. Yeah, he's just chilling out, I think. He doesn't want to make any kind of mistake because he knows if Burns does, he can capitalize on it. But you can see Seafelt just stretching it out through that split lane section. So crazy. You just got to be so stoked to be in the middle of the two best in the business. I mean, the kid's young. Yeah, 17 years old, Colton Burns is mixing it up with two of the best to ever get behind the wheel of a 1600 car. Yeah, if we win He is just hucking that thing around too, Brent. Yeah, and you gotta be careful. He's driving the wheels off that thing. Two laps to go this time by for the 1600 class. Yeah, Burns is laying it all out right now. Wow, Burns is just hitting his marks right now. Look at that. 
cross it back over. Might have lost a little bit there. Right, but he's going to gain some right here on entry to turn two again. Seafelt checks up early. Burns waits right to the last second. Slams on the brakes. Yeah, Fitzgerald is just like, come on. I wish I had one more gear in this car to try to reel in the top two. Going through the Fox Shocks rhythm section one more time. All those cars really set up nicely going through there. Oh, a little bit of a mistake by Seafelt. That's going to let Burns get a run as they go up the hill. Man, Burns just wasn't quite close enough to make any moves there, but... Look at this, Shane! Gaining He's some going more to the inside! Wow, Burns had the front tires locked up. He had to check up twice there. Fitzgerald in the mix as well. They're coming to the white flag this time. Yeah, Fitz kind of over-rotated there on the exit, so it costed him a little bit of ground. Now Fitzgerald buttoning up on the back of Burns. Seafelt gets away for now, stretches it out to about three car lengths through turn one. Here's where Burns has been fast all afternoon, though. He's going to late break this left-hander on the far end of the course once again. Wow, Seafelt really needs to play the protected line. Burns is right there. I'm sure his spotter is telling him, hey, Michael, you're, you got about five, six car lengths. You don't want to make your driver nervous, but he's been in the seat so many seasons. I think he'll be all right. Man, the last two or three laps, Burns has got crazy runs up toward the top of Ziegler Cat Hill. We'll see if he can put it together one more time. Yeah, Burns better be careful here. Fitz is going to try to set up a little bit wider. Watch. He's going to try to cross back underneath. Can't get it there. Just crazy how much ground Burns is able to make up. One corner to go here for 1600 buggy, and Seafelt is going to hold on and get the job done in round six. But what a weekend for Colton Burns. Omaha, Nebraska in the 314, John Fitzgerald. And taking up the runner-up spot in second in the 307, Colton Burns. And taking the win from Heartland, Wisconsin in the 312, Michael Seatbelt. Boy, Nolan, what another great race on the day. It's hard to beat Michael Seatbelt when he gets out front. It's been that way for quite a while, Brent. We'll chat with our third place finisher, John Fitzgerald. Fitz battling the car a little bit yesterday. Uh, seemed like things got figured out a little bit today. We were able to put it on the box. Yeah, we, uh, we stayed up pretty late last night making a whole bunch of changes to the car. We had to go find parts and borrow some parts for some guys. And uh, everything worked way better than it did yesterday. Uh, definitely not where we want to be, but uh, we'll take it over yesterday's finish. Now, yesterday was a mess getting spun out, then I spun out, and then... So uh, it's good to be up here on the box. We were battling. It was tough to pass out there. I mean, there, we were, I think we went six wide through the split lane the one time. Or not six wide, but we were, we were tight. It was, a, it was a battle. No, I couldn't be here without uh, Bruce Fraley giving me a, ride to, a car to drive, a competitive edge, uh, giving us a, building awesome motors. And I was on the phone with him all night long last night, uh, figuring out our shocks and uh, all the family and friends that came out to watch and uh, couldn't be here without all these guys. Congratulations, John Fitzgerald, third place today in 1600 single buggy. Moving on over second place, yesterday's winner, Colton Burns. Colton, uh, where do you even start with uh, you being on the podium between these two guys? you got to be thrilled to be out there battling with them. Yeah, these guys are the best in the world, and competing with them every weekend is starting to get really fun. But uh, I've never seen a buggy race that had that much battling in it, and I was a part of it, and that was just awesome. You know, everywhere we were within a car length of each other and smashing Nerf bars and whatnot, you don't see that all the time. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, I gotta give it up to everybody, Wood Orchard, Going Garbage, HRI Services, uh, Breeze Apple and Stables, Creations, um, then also my grandma and grandpa, uh, Northern Door Pest Control, Dimsmore Race Engines, my mom and dad, um, and uh, Jeff, and then also uh, all my family watching back at home, and my girlfriend, thank you to all of them, and it was a good day. Congratulations, Colton Burns, second place today in single buggy, and on top of the box again, Mike Seafelt. Mike, if I remember right, you didn't even get a chance to race here last year. Needed a backup driver, so uh, first weekend on the track, and it looked like you figured it out in a hurry. Uh, yeah, yeah, we figured it out in a hurry. I really messed up yesterday. 
Um, Colton got, you know, I was trying to pass Colton. I felt like we left one on the table. We could have won one yesterday or put on a great show. But I don't know how many guys I passed today, but it was awesome. I mean, I'm still shaking right now. It looked like a great battle, especially towards the end. Colton was even putting even more pressure on you towards the end. How were you able to hold him off? Well, he was. He really was. And like I say, I got to give it to him. He was, he's fast this year. But my car was breaking up on right-handers. Or no, left-handers. It would just sputter for a little bit, and then it would get going. So that's where he would make up ground on me. And, uh, but once we got in them straight lines, but I'm telling you, I'm 53 years old, but I can still run, man. <laughs> you sure can. Who would you like to thank today, Mike? You know what? We have a great group of people that help us get to the track. Bruce Fraley's, these cars are Bruce Fraley cars, me and John's. Um, my family, Colin Connor, my, my smoking hot wife, Barb, my dad's spotting for me. Um, Jeff, the Wolf, Jeff Wolf Racing helps us pit. They pit for me and Jeff and uh, Competitive Edge Motors and uh, my, uh, my cousin Olivia. And the furry. Oh, I forgot Joey. Joey is a huge part of the team, too. And uh, that's it. Congratulations. Mike Seafelt, winner today in 1600 single buggy. Let's hear it one more time for the single buggy podium. John Fitzgerald in third, Colton Burns in second, and Mike Seafelt, your winner. Well, guys, that was a hell of a race. I won't lie to you. That was awesome. This weekend was awesome, too, also. Just first place and a second place. What more of a dream could you ask for than that, you know? And starting seventh, so. 7th to 2nd, not complaining at all at that. That was an awesome weekend. Uh, now, for the rest of the weekend, we're just going to be chilling out here. Uh, everybody just went to go get tacos up the hill, so I'm just in the camper alone. Going to take a shower right now. Uh, but, yep, it was a good weekend, and uh, we'll continue it out too here, just kind of see what else goes on throughout the day. But awesome racing on my side. I loved every bit of it, and uh, it was a good weekend for sure.